Shalom de Romao de la Jamal, y así Shalom Valero, de acuerdo con Israel, de Hidro Amén. The halacha states regarding women that they have to dress with sinew, they have to dress with modesty. So what does it entail that a woman should dress with modesty? Where do we learn these halachot? Where is it written, these halachot? The truth is, if you look in the Shulchan Ruch, you're not going to really find the laws of modesty over there, you know, uh, written like this, you know, like where, how they should dress. So then where does it come from? The truth is, we have it in the Gemara, in the Talmud. It says over there that shok be'isha erba, right? Tefach be'isha erba. Kol isha erba. Se'ar be'isha erba. That's what it says, right? All these things. Zeroa be'isha erba. Tefach be'isha erba. So what do all these things mean? What it means is that all these places in the woman's body, they're called erba. What does that mean? Nakedness, right? Promiscuity. It's like, uh, right, uh, it's, uh, there's a certain sense of uh, attractiveness there, you know, in these places. Sorry? I'm sorry, I'm not hearing you. What I, I'm not hearing you. Nudeness. Nudeness? Oh, nudity, nudity. Right, no, nakedness, right, right. Right, I, I, I understand what you're saying. But uh, right, it's a little bit different than that, right? Erva means, like, yeah, it also means that, right, uh, being naked. Right? Uh, but it's, it's more than that, because being naked, obviously, that's what it is. You're not covering it, so it's naked. But we're talking, right, that it, it also has an attraction. It's attractive. Right? Uh, so this is what it means. So therefore, these parts of the body and the, and the woman have to be covered. Uh, why, why, should they, why should they be covered? Because if they're not covered, if she goes outside like that, she's going to be arousing you know, people's attention too much, you know, and be making men have bad thoughts about her. This is the problem, you know? So this is the reason why uh, they have to dress properly and, not, and avoid this kind of problem. So therefore, what do they have to do? And so let's in, delineate the whole thing, right, from beginning to end. First of all, the, the general rule is tefach beisha arba. What does that mean, tefach beisha? Tefach means a fist, right? Eight centimeters. So the, the average fist is about eight centimeters. So what does that mean? Anywhere on the body where, the, where it's supposed to be covered there, if a woman exposes a tefach, eight centimeters in her body, that's called erba. That's uh, right. Uh, that's something which is attractive. Uh, it could be on her cleavage, on her chest, on her back, right, uh, all over her body. But you know, the, especially the right, the more uh, right. Uh, lower areas as well, right, which are even more, more so. But uh, that's called erba, not allowed. So therefore, what does that mean? That a woman has to dress in a way that one tefach, eight centimeters of her body is not exposed, her skin. Otherwise, it's a problem, right? What are we talking about when she goes outside, right? We're not talking about when she's home. That's already chasidut, you know, that's already uh, piety, you know, that's uh, saintliness, uh, to dress like that at home. But I'm talking about outside, for sure, right, that uh, this is the halakha, because men are watching her. And also, the same thing applies, by the way, if men come over the house, you know, and uh, some guests come, men, and these people are strangers to her, not her husband, right, obviously, this is not her son, so therefore what happens is that at that time as well, she has a dress, it's nude. So, erva is eight centimeters, as we said, right, tefach, that's one thing. Then we said, shok be'isha erva, what is shok? What part of the body is the shok? It's machloket, right? The truth is, most poskim say the shok means the uh, uh, the shin. In other words, below, down below the shin, right? Right? Below the knees, below the there's you have the thigh, right? That's the upper part. Then you have the knees, which is the middle, and then you have the shin, which is below that. And then you have the actual foot, right? Itself. So that's, that's, how, that's how it's built. So according to Moscow scheme, when it says zeroa, I'm sorry, when it says shok, it means the, uh, the shin. So what does that mean? Even the shin of the woman has to be covered, according to that. 
that's also promiscuous. But, uh, so therefore, what does she have to do in order to solve this problem? She has to wear stockings, right? Uh, she has to wear some kind of a covering that cover her shin. There's also another opinion which is brought down in the Prima Gadim. Prima Gadim says a little bit differently than all the other Paskim. He says that no, the, the, the shok is not the shin, he says it's the thigh. He says the shok is the thigh. So according to that, the shin could be open, right? According to that, according to him. Because only the shok is a problem, which is the thigh according to him. So therefore, that, according to that opinion, uh, the shin would be not, not a problem. So what does that mean? That according to this opinion, a woman can walk around with her shin uncovered, you know, uh, that would be okay. So is that the halakha? Through the truth is the halakha is like the majority of the, of the poskim. The majority of the poskim say that this is, not, this is not the proper way to look at it. So what does that mean? The majority of the poskim say that when it says shok beisha, beisha erva, it's talking about the shin. And therefore she has to cover that too as well. So therefore most communities, most religious communities, what they do is that they make the ladies cover their shin as well. But here's the question, right? How do you cover the shin, right? As we said, right, there should be some stockings there. But what kind of stockings are we talking about, right? Because there's different types of stockings, you know, there's different types of pantyhose and stuff like this, right? So what are we talking about? If it's a see-through, you know, you can see right through it, it's clear, right? Is that good? Not Is that good. smooth? Not, not really, because you can see everything, you know? So <laughs> what difference does it make if she's wearing it or not wearing it? So you can give it up, man. You know, it's the same thing, you know? So therefore, that doesn't really help you. So what are we talking about? When we say that you need stockings, we're talking about either colored stockings, that you, know, you can't see the skin, or we're talking about thick stockings, that you know, it's so thick, even though it's clear, you can't see it, because of the thickness. I remember, you know, when I was... Uh, but this when, is when skin I was, color. It's skin color. Skin color, it's true. It is skin color sometimes. This is, yeah, okay, so here's the thing, right? That there's different customs. In the, uh, in the Hasidic world, in the, in the Sparty world, they wear more like colored, you know, colored ones. Pedi, pedi, pedi. You know, so it's not clear. Colored ones? Colored, yeah, like white, black, or blue, whatever. But right? no see-through. Right, no see-through. So, but Ashkenazim, what they do is the Litaim, they put skin color, like you said. But what they do is they put thick, you know, skelly, skelly, you know? Really so, yeah, head. it's like, you know, they say, I, I remember when I used to talk to women, they used to tell me, Oh yeah, it has to be 40 dinar, 50 dinar, 60 dinar, I don't know. It's like a measure, you know, of thickness. It's called dinar. <laughs> Whoever's in the clothing well, business, maybe knows about this, I don't know. The whole really outward walking, the uh, woman walking with that. Uh, right, right. So they say, right, I think they, were, they told me it has to be like 40 dinar or whatever, according to this custom. But the truth is, you know, that's not the best custom. The best custom is that it shouldn't be skin color. It should be a different color. This way, right, it doesn't look like the leg at all. This is the best way to do it. There's different customs, you know? What about when, when you said you were going to say you were any more young? Something yeah, what I, what I was saying is that the women used to tell me, you know? Women used to tell me, oh yeah, it has to be 40 dinar, this dinar, that dinar, you know? So I learned something. I got some Israelites over there. Shall we start So I still remember a little bit this, uh, this stuff, you know, from the old days. But uh, the point is, you know, the best thing is that if you have a color, you can't see the leg, this is the best sinew that there is. Nothing better than that. So that's regarding the leg, right? So what does that mean? That the upper thigh, the thigh should be covered with a skirt or a dress, right? And the lower, uh, and the lower part, which is the shin, should be covered with, uh, with stockings, you know, which, which are colored. This would be the best way to, to, to take care of the problem, right? Uh, and uh, then we have the issue, there's also other issues down there. There's also the issue of the feet, right? What about the feet? Are the feet also called erva? It's also called nakedness, right? Uh, yeah. You know, it's, it's also? Maybe not. Maybe not. Okay, huh? <laughs> okay, I like that. That's good. Okay, so the truth is, you know, that according to halakha, the feet are not called erva. You know, it's not something which, uh, you know, makes people, uh, you know, attracted to women to see her feet so much. You know, some people have, they like feet, but, you know, whatever. But I think that for most people, you know, it doesn't really, uh, you know, give them such a big thing. So therefore, right, the feet is not really considered to be a part of that. So the truth is, according to halakha, 
A woman can wear like sandals, you know? There's no prohibition for a woman to wear sandals. She can wear it if she wants, you know? If but they, it's if better. They, if they're allowed to wear high heels. Right, high heels, it's a good question also. Yeah, high heels, you know? So the truth is, you know, that um, there's no prohibition. There's no prohibition to wear high heels. You know? It's not, that, it's not written anywhere like this, you know? But, you know, she shouldn't do something which is like too much, you know, too loud, you know? You know? She looks already like, you know, like a street girl, you know what I mean? That's already too much, you know what I mean? And this has to be in good taste. Get on with it, get on with it. You know? All yeah. of them, they are working with a... Uh, right. With, uh, like a uh, sack. I don't know. <laughs> don't hide here. Not too, not too loud, you know what I mean? Not too, not too flamboyant. Right? Zermet Yalik was sort of, you know? Zermet the figure that's over. You know? Like, like, right? Nice and, you know, good, good. Elegantly, elegantly. You know? I have Elegant. a question. I have a question. Yes. What about the Hasidic people, the men? What about them? Where they wearing all these uh, suits and, oh, oh, oh. and the, it's No, this is their custom, you know. You know why they do this? You know why? What's the reason why? They want to look like people used to dress like 200 years ago. Why? What's the reason why? Because they shouldn't mix together with the goyim, you know. This is the reason why they dress this way. Tell me, everybody was wearing like this for hundred years ago. Yeah, you know, the colonial, colonial, you know, like the, you know, go to the Amish, right? The Amish, you know, and see how they dress. They used to dress like that, you know, in Russia, Rusetti, you know? In Russia, they used to dress like that 200 years ago, 100 years ago, whatever it was, right? This was the dress that they used to have before. Huh? What, what is that? Oh, that's, ah, right, right. Yeah, it's, this is also the same thing. It's all 200 years ago. That's what it is. You understand? The reason, the reason why they wear these things is to stay away from the goyim, you know? Because when a goyim sees you like this, he says, oh, this guy, I don't want to talk with him, you know? I want to tell you now, you're not suffering. You have a shirt. You have inside... Uh, Qatar, uh -huh. and then jacket. Yes, yes. And are you not suffering? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, in this, in this uh, aspect. Yeah, it's okay, you know. Uh, I, I survive, I survive. You know. Survive, but if you take a jacket, it's yeah. even more comfortable. And I'm sure that gave you a good half as well as that. I'm that gave you a good job. Yeah. Okay, now we're talking about something else, but anyway, right? Uh, but uh, right, anyway, right? I understand what you're saying. I understand you very well, mess me. But uh, right, uh, anyway, the point is like this, you know, that the tzniut, the laws of tzniut are more for the women, you know, than the men, you know. So that's why we're talking about the women law. Men, you know, a man, the truth is from Kalapa, a man can go with shorts, you know, and a t-shirt, you know, outside. There's no, there's no prohibition against that. You understand? Even though it's not the proper way to walk around like that, but according to Halakha, there's no problem with that. Well, you know? But question. a woman cannot walk around with shorts and a t-shirt, you know what I mean? This is not the way. That's what yeah. my question is. Never, yeah. uh, no, I'm not saying in any Halakha, so you have to wear this. Right. But you know what it is? What, I'll tell you something. Some people sometimes people ask me this question. You know what it is? When you're a rabbi, you have to dress like a rabbi. You know what I mean? You can't dress like an like a athlete, you know, a sportsman, you know? Like, you know you know? That's the way it is, you know what I mean? A, a rabbi has to dress like a rabbi. Right, but when I'm outside also, I have to look like a rabbi, you know what I mean? It's the, you know, it's, it's you know? Uh, everybody has their, you know, uniform, you know? Policeman has his uniform, you know what I mean? Rabbi has also his uniform, you know? One more question. Where is Garsham? Say somewhere you have to. Uh, oh yeah, you can shave with uh, you can shave with cream, you know, or machine. You can shave, but not with a razor, you know. With a razor. Razor. Say somewhere you have to. Dana shilva, dana. Dana shilva. This is esukayari kedusha chasidut ya upro. Kanoni kera di upro magalidone chasidut, you know, for magalidone. 
Kedushan, Kedushan, Magash. There's holiness there regarding the, uh, regarding the beard. Kadoshi, Hasir Agatza. If you trim, if you trim, if someone trims. You can trim, no problem. You can trim. You can take scissors, you know, and trim it or some kind of trimmer, right? No, you can probably, you can trim it. Some people like to grow, like, all the way, you know? This is also good, you know, it's good. I mean, if you, if you, if you want, you know, whatever. Not obligated to do that. But uh, anyway, right, uh, just don't use a razor, don't use a knife. That's the most important thing, right? Stay away from Mashina Shilev. So, as we said, right, that uh, we're talking about the women. So, that's, we, we said the feet is okay. So, what about uh, the, uh, uh, what about the arms? Where, where is it allowed and where is it not allowed, right? So, the truth is that it says, Zeroa, Beisha Erva. Where is the Zeroa? Zeroa is this or is it this, the Zeroa? Right, so, according to Halakha, this is the Zeroa. So therefore, this part, the upper arm, has to be covered by a woman, you know, until the elbows. So the el she has to cover until the elbow and also the elbow. But this part, which is the forearm, you know, can be open. This is the halakha. Uh, it's not erva. Kalebi, kalebi. Katsev, yeah, katsev zakhar, we don't want to What about the hat? Katsev, we don't want to go back. Okay, so, I'm sorry, what were you saying? Hat. hat. Okay, that's also a good question. But before we get to hat, right? So we said with the arms, the upper arm is the is the place where you have to cover, right? Uh, we already talked about the cleavage, right? The chest and the back has to be covered for sure. There's no question about that. Eight centimeters is too, is too much already. If you have eight centimeters open somewhere in the back and the front, no good. That's what we said, right? Regarding the woman. So now regarding the, the hair, right? Also, and so it says se'ah be'isha erba. So what does that mean? That the woman's hair is also attractive. No? Uh, but they put more attractive hair. Hey, you're, yes, it's good what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. You're right, you're right. Sorry. Sorry. So this is the problem, you understand? So here's the thing, right? So, so that, what about a woman who's not married? Right? Does she have to cover her hair? It says in the Shulchan Ruch that even a woman who's not married should cover her hair. But the minhag today is not like this, you know? The minhag today is that women who are not married, young girls, they don't cover their hair. Today. What's the reason why? Probably the reason is because we want them to get married, you know, so they should look nice, you know. Yeah. You know, this is, a, this is a, because if they're not going to show their hair, who's going to want to marry them? They, they look like a nun. Who wants, to, who wants to marry by somebody like that? So this is the reason why they show their hair. This is the only custom anyway, it's minhad, you know, to cover their hair when they're, but when you're married, when a woman is married already, it's already from the Torah, you know, that they have to cover their hair. That's already something else. So unfortunately today, you know, we know what happened, right? Unfortunately, in Europe and also where we lived, you know, in Russia, Georgia, these places, you know, they were not covering their hair anymore, the women. Even the married women, they were not. They stopped, you know? But this, they became like modern, modern and bigachman, you know? But the truth is that, point halakha, a woman who's married has to cover her hair. So now the question is, right, what do you cover it with? So what you said is right. They shouldn't cover it with a wig, you know, pariki You know, so where does pariki come from? This pariki, this came from the Ashkenazim, you know, the Ashkenazim had this custom. But the truth is that many of the poskim already have written, most of the poskim, that their custom is no good. You know, you know, the pariki of Rola Maziyah, we don't tell them to the tma. It's the, 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 the wig looks even better than her own hair. So what's the point? What did you, what did you accomplish? You're covering hair with hair, you know? So what's the logic of that? You know what I mean? What's the point of that? So that's the reason why a, a woman who's really tanua, what does she do? She doesn't put on pariki. She puts on a real hat, you know, a kasinka, you know, like our grandmothers used to do. You remember, right, your grandmother? Uh, I remember my grandmother. <laughs> they used to cover their hair, like, like, uh, like really, you know, cover their hair. Not, not with pariki. Who, who had pariki? Two generations ago. Nobody had uh, pariki in our, in, our, in, our, in, our, in our country. Yeah, kasinka, you know, whatever, hat, you know, whatever. That's the way it was, you know, that's the way it has to be. So this is the sniut of the body of the woman, you know, pretty much, right? Kol isha ila, right? So what does that mean? That a person shouldn't listen to a woman singing. This is also erva, you know? A woman who's singing. So this is also uh, attractive, very attractive. So therefore, what should a person do? If you see like a woman who's singing in a certain room, you know, don't go over there, you know, leave the room, go out. Because uh, you shouldn't really be watching her like that. You know what I mean? 
because this is attractive, you know, this is erva, yeah. Probably dancing also. Dancing, yeah, well, it's even worse, right, of course. Of course. If it's, of course. If it's singing in the house, and the husband is next uh, room. Yeah. Husband, uh, so if your if your wife is singing, you know, no problem, you know, because she's your wife, you know, you're allowed to be with her. What's the problem, right? Or if it's your daughter, no problem. I don't care about that. Or it's your mother, I don't care about that. That's okay, you know. Uh, that's okay. What about now? I see some uh, yeah. material I read, like in Israel, in Jewish, yeah. uh, rabbinical, uh, you know, world, Hasidic world. There is lots of controversial uh, visions about our future, our activity. I don't know. I'm not talking about the future. I'm talking about present now. Okay. Future, I don't know. I'm not a Nabi. I'm not a... I'm not a Nabi, Nabi Kerala. What do you say about the peacemakers? Ah, I don't know. This is, you know, it's not even Zhapri, it's Zhapri, it's Kaskari. You know, the last time is Raza Egone Batavshi. You know, this is all fake, fake news, you know. All these rabbis you should know, by the way, who talk about the future, you know, they say, oh, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. You should take all these rabbis, lock them up in jail. This is what you have to do with them. You know, all of them are crazy people. I never saw any big rabbi, any big kacham, you know. Who talks like this? Only the stupid rabbis talk like this. They be like, that 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 you know. So, that's what they talk. So who talks like this? You know what? We have never what today. We have uh, we have we don't have anything. We don't have never what today. What do you know? What what do you know about when Mashiach is coming? Is coming this year, next year? What do you know about that? You don't know nothing. Stop making up uh, some stories. You know. I got the gamoy guna. Tell us here. I got the debilu. I got the gaza. Where did you get this from? You know, we don't know. Nobody knows. It says in the Zohar Kadosh that we, nobody knows when Mashiach is coming. You know, there was only a few people who knew Yaakov Avinu. You know, and uh, you know, there's big people. Some you know, nobody knows when Mashiach is coming. Nobody's allowed to know that. Whether he's tzaddik or not tzaddik, right? Baba Sali didn't know. Right? Baba Kaduri didn't know. Nobody knew. They don't know. Nobody knows. It's not revealed. It's not. Uh, I like Gamot Chaim. Akadosh Baruch Hu will let us know, you know? And by the way, you should know, we'll finish it off here. I don't want to take you too long. We have to do our beat. But I just want to tell you one more thing, you know, that uh, regarding this, you know, if, if what is, you know, coming, Mashiach, coming on Mashiach, right? It's a good question. So, you know, some people say, oh, today Mashiach is already here. Akari, of course. This is not really true, you know? I'll tell you the, honestly, you know? You know what it means, Mashiach is really here? You know what it really means? It means that Eliyahu Anavi is going to come the day before, you know, Mashiach, you know. Yeah, no. On Monday, Eliyahu Anavi is going to come. And Tuesday, Mashiach is going to come, the day after. That's what it says in the Talmud, Masechet Erovim, you know. One day, Eliyahu, first day, next day, Mashiach. That's it. That's all we have. We don't have anything, we don't need anything else, you know. Uh, so, stop making these up, these, these stories, you know. You know, don't, don't do these kinds of things. Just follow the rules, you know. You know what it says, right, that Eliyahu comes the day before Mashiach. So what happens is that the day that Mashiach comes, what's going to be? Geulah, you know, Daskra, Daskra, you know. So what does that mean? That the Goyim will come and do our labor, you know, our, our work. You know, you know, this is what's going to be when Mashiach comes. So if you see that, that means Mashiach came. If you see Eliyahu, the day before, that means Mashiach is coming tomorrow. That's what it means. It's very simple, you know. It's, uh, no big mystery. Yeah, yeah. Yes, but the hands are there forever. Why the reason? I'm sorry? Oh, Rabbi, yeah. Rabbi? Well, you know, it says in the Talmud that uh, everybody, has to cover, everybody has to cover their hair, you know? Uh, this, is, this is because Irat Shemaim. means if somebody covers his hair, Gamshani says Shinya. Gamshani is Moshinech. Irat Shemaim. Moshishek. This is the reason why we cover our hair. And if you do, it says in the Kabbalah, if you cover your hair with two, two times, one and two, this is even better, you know? More irat shamayim. Even more. So that's why the chachamim, the rabbis, they put two. One, two. And some people even put three. three. Did you know that? <laughs> three, yeah. Three, yeah. Three, you know how my rabbi used to do it? Ramanan Rabadia? He used to put kippah, then the hat, and then talit on top. Three. One, two, three. Right? Adin, dva, three. Nabi Khanani Al-Kashomir, Sikhabish Bukhul, Sikhabish Bukhul, Sikhabish Bukhul, Sikhabish Bukhul, Sikhabish Bukhul, Sikhabish Bukhul, Sikhabish Bukhul
ומה עשיתו? יגדיר תורה ויגדיר...